All right, Michael, what are we doing? Well, the time has finally come. It is time to ditch the old two barrel, 350 Holly mysterious box of carburation and go with something that's a little bit more modern on the old 253. This is something that we've been planning on doing for a hell of a long time now, something we've been really excited to actually get started on. Since what, November or something like that we've had it? It feels like it's been a year. We had that, <laughs> we've had the sniper now sitting in the box for like since November and, and slowly we've been gathering parts piece by piece because basically our intention was we want to try to get this done in like two or three days. That's not going to happen now. <laughs> we'll explain why in a second. So the reason why we're doing this is because one, carburetors to us, are a little little bit of a mystery. We get the general gist of how they work, but when it comes to tuning them and getting the best performance out of them and reliability, it's just, it's <laughs> well over the top of our heads. By ditching the old carby, what that basically means is we no longer have to worry about stuff like cold starting issues, flooding it. What else goes wrong with carbies? Flat spots. Overfueling. Overfueling and just all the issues that come with, over, with carbies that can be fixed, yes, if you know what you're doing, but we don't know what we're doing. With a system like this, this is supposed to change all of that. Supposedly, this is just what we read on the brochure. <laughs> supposed to provide reliability, predictability, suitability, all the abilities. <laughs> what about sustainability? Sustainability? <laughs> Probably not. But anyway, basically what that's going to do for us is take care of the carby and so much more. And what we might do is actually pull the carby off and we'll talk about why, why that is the case. But Michael, why is it already on? Yeah, so, we, uh, we royally stuffed up, and not in the way that you'd expect either. We spent a whole day yesterday putting this carpet together, putting on the intake manifold, bolt and roll up, we had a great day, it was good fun, everything worked, we were playing with some really expensive bit of kit, and you could tell, because everything worked. All that was great. The one thing that we didn't realise up until today, about midway through, is that the uh, microphone wasn't turned on. So all the footage that we took and all the recording that we did is completely junk, basically. So <clears throat> you're going to have to bear with us, guys, because now we're going to have to basically run you through what we did and how we did it. And uh, there's going to be a lot of montages because, yeah, we have no sound in any of the videos that we recorded yesterday. That's great. So uh, bear with us, guys. We'll try and piece it together best we can and take you through what we did and see how we go. <laughs> Alright, so why would you do this? <clears throat> and what is a Sniper Holly, for those that haven't seen it before? Basically, what this is, is a uh, EFI carburetor, basically. Inside here, there's two injectors. Those two injectors then feed fuel into the carby, just like you would normally through a carby, I suppose. Through these little tiny holes here. And I don't know if you can see them, they're really tiny. So the injectors put fuel into those, in, uh, those little holes there, and basically... It runs like a normal carby. To control it, there's a computer here in the front of the carburetor. I think it's in the front. And that does all the computing for, for it. Basically, the way that it works is there's two things that this carburetor needs at the very minimum. It needs to get a coolant temp reading from the engine, which is easy because it's just got a coolant temp sensor that you just plug into this plug here. And then lastly, it just needs to have an O2 sensor put into the exhaust. And it's just reading AFR basically the entire time. It's just basically trying to find that perfect ratio, which I think you can set or you can adjust a little bit as well too. And it's just aiming for that. So throughout your rev range, it'll just basically try to aim and adjust the fuel to try and get that perfect ratio. The beauty of this is, is it doesn't require any tuning. So they say it is self-learning. Basically you start the car, you run it for 10 minutes or so, and then you go for a drive, you drive it under a few different conditions, and different loads. And I am told that this thing will self-learn and basically build its own base map.
So the cost of a new Holly is about six hundred dollars, <laughs> and the cost of this is about two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. So <laughs> obviously you can see that if you're really shitty with your cold start, what do you do? You spend another fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, spend another fifteen hundred dollars and buy a Holly if I can't be. Yeah, it is expensive, there's no doubt about it, and to be honest, it's probably going to be the only 253 in Australia, I reckon, that anyone would bother to spend $2,000 on a carby, but the point is, I just want to see if it works. For that reliability alone, I want to give it a go and see if it works, because if this works, we're going to put it on everything. <laughs> <laughs> this will go onto my panel van as well too, which has a 308 in it, and it's just a cool bit of kit, like it's, it looks beautiful. Power-wise, we're going, yes, we're going from a two barrel to four barrel, so maybe we might see a little bit of an increase, but I'm not chasing power. That's not what I want to do this for. I want to do this because purely I just want something that is reliable, turnkey, it'll start every time, don't have to worry about chokes, never gonna flood itself, all those benefits. The wiring of it is actually super simple. It only actually needs like five wires, five wires for this whole thing to run, basically. Mm. At its minimum, you can make it really complicated and like wire it into the distributor so it can also control timing as well too, which would make it an even better package because you could probably get more performance out of it. I'm not gonna go to that extent because I just wanna keep it simple. We're not gonna worry about that. We're basically just hooking up coolant temp sensor because we need it, oxygen sensor because we need that as well too. And that's pretty much it. So the kit comes with, there's two kinds of kits. You can get like a premium kit, which comes with an external fuel pump and everything like that. But I'm not going down that path. We wanna put it into an in-tank pump. So I didn't get that kit, but the kit comes with, this is like your wiring. This is all your relays and stuff. So I think these, these are like your five main wires that you absolutely need. And these wires here are all like extras that you can put into it to control stuff. Like this can control your thermofans, which we're gonna run. That can be a trigger to turn your thermofans on because then I can adjust it as well too. How can you adjust it, you might ask. <laughs> well, that's because it comes with this little Holy Sniper LCD screen. Can you make your hand look small so the screen looks bigger? Hang on, what if, I, if I hold it out? Oh, it's massive. It's like a Haltech. Yeah, but it's really not. <laughs> yeah, so it comes with this little screen here, which is a touch screen, and you can basically set the whole thing up and control the whole thing up through this screen. So we'll run that probably into the center console so it's hidden away so you can't see it. Um, but that'll be pretty cool. And uh, that's pretty much it. So obviously that is a four barrel and that's a two barrel. So the old cruddy two barrel manifold with an adapter plate that's come from the 70s. <laughs> with a giant gaping hole through the center of it, is gonna be gone, which is probably a good bonus because this is very grimy. And yeah. Michael was saying how much he loved his engine when it was so refreshed and not grimy like this. Yeah. Because when petrol leaks out of your carburetor for like eight years and leaks all onto the manifold, oh, that's yeah. what it does. I've had petrol leaking on this manifold for a long time <laughs> and you can see that. So we had to ditch this to run a four barrel one, which obviously said it before, Michael got the Edelbrock performer which is a good manifold. Other than that, yeah, with the old in with the new. Go yeah. have a look at the new. Yeah. So this is the Edelbrock Performer to suit uh, Holden's. Yeah, it's a dual plane manifold that suits Holden's for a four barrel. Uh, what we, we didn't have to do much to it really. The heater pipe just goes there. We just cleaned up the old thermostat. Um, the one thing that Michael did do really well was he planned the whole process. So he went through Race, <laughs> Raceworks website and basically got everything to plug up every hole that he didn't want. We've got an adapter to suit because that is the temp sensor obviously for the the carby, and that is the factory one to go to the dash. Um, he's plugged up a few of the holes, he's got black ones, they're all black, and he got uh, Allen key, so they're flush fit. So to, in order to put this on, we obviously had to take the distributor out, so we set the motor to the top dead center and ripped the distributor out. It was when we were going to put it on that we noticed those two locating pins aren't gonna match the intake manifold. So we had to rip them out. And the one on the left hand side of the motor came out really easy. Yeah. The one yeah. on the right hand side of the motor, didn't come out easy. Yeah, I had to get inside a sort of a precarious position <laughs> to get that sucker out, but um, we got there in the end. 
Edelbrock suggests to lay um, goop front and back, so RTV, yeah, instead of using gasket. the cork because they worried the cork slides. So we had to ditch that, and then as we've dropped it on <laughs> and we've put all the bolts in, <laughs> you know when you do a job and there's two bolts left over and you're like, hmm, where do these bolts go? We're looking and then we're like, oh, where's the middle two bolts? <laughs> the holes. Yeah, the middle two holes. And then they're like, oh, we we're supposed to drill that out. <laughs> <laughs> we got too excited and we just threw it all together before reading the instructions Full properly. Full disclaimer, Michael read the instructions. Yeah. Um, and obviously must have uh, skipped page 74. So we had to rip the manifold off and quickly drill it before our like, glue dried. <laughs> yeah. We didn't even get to film that because we were in such a rush. We were in we, such a rush. We literally just <laughs> yeah. ripped it off. <laughs> Got the drill out, went new, new, new. And then slapped it back on. <laughs> and then, oh, who knew? There's no bolts left over. Yeah. So, that's what we had to do. It's an easy job changing an intake manifold, but we just obviously look past drilling out those holes. And there is actually three holes there. So the gaskets had to suit all different types of Holden heads, I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah. Um, so that was a pretty easy job. Um, Everything worked out really well. So the, we, we dropped the dizzy back in, but we're not going to put the cap on until we run the fuel lines because we don't know if it's going to get in the way and stuff like that. But we're ready to drop the carby back on for you guys. Yeah. Obviously, and we've already had it on, but yeah. we pulled it off just to film that segment just then. Mm. But to explain the carby. But we'll drop it back on and we'll explain what we've done for accelerator cable because obviously we're still using the standard accelerator cable and not like an Aeroflow adjustable one or something like that. So do we want to drop it on, Michelle? Yep, let's do that. The piece of resistance. The piece of resistance. <laughs> All right, so resistance. like we said, we're not going to bullshit it. We've obviously already had this on, um, but we pulled it off to talk through how the um, car actually works. So now it's time to put it back on for hopefully the final time. All right, let's put it on. Come on. I know they're the ones that are Every time I'm holding it though, I just want to... <laughs> Even though we did this yesterday, it still excites me to think about putting this back on right now. Excitement in three, two, one. Touchdown. Holy shit, that looks dick! <laughs> <laughs> so now we have to do the Hollywood thing where we go, Oh my god, it's so good, guys. Look how good it looks. I can't believe that fit first time. Man, that <laughs> took five days to fit. Oh man, man that was tough work, yeah. It, was... <laughs> it um, no, it, it looks really good. It fits on there. Perfectly, to be honest. This is not far off where we got to yesterday anyway, so yeah. <laughs> what you're seeing is pretty much exactly what we're, we're up to anyway. This wire here goes forward to our temperature sensor here. I'm not going to plug that in just yet because we'll do all the electronics in one sitting. Uh, so now we're just about ready to bolt it on. The only other thing we had to figure out was the accelerator cable. We made this bracket. We didn't use the original Carby one and Michael didn't want to go one of those big Aeroflow or Raceworks big carby plates and stuff because then it, it kind of takes it away from what it is supposed to be is just still a stock looking engine but just with the EFI reliability so we ended up making this it bolts to the back section on the manifold and then we needed a support bracket because it was flexing a little bit which we're really good at making brackets for cables to pull something or push something <laughs> um, it just yeah. seems to be our little I niche. know. Shifter cables, accelerator cables. You want a cable made with a nice bracket? <laughs> you call us. Yeah, we could we, we build your house with this bracket. <laughs> so we did that and it works mint. Yeah. We painted it black and put it on. Yeah. Oh. But we want to show you a little trick that we actually learned from the Skid Factory. <laughs> yeah. So anyone anyone who's watching this channel is obviously probably already watching the Skid Factory, so they may have already seen it. But if yeah. you haven't, this is a cool little trick that we learned from them and it yeah. works really well. So we did a little dodgy thing. Let's just go. I'll just go show you what I did. <laughs> I don't know how to see, but see the little dimple just there? That's what we're talking about, that little notch right there. And believe it or not, if you've never seen it before, that will actually strengthen up a 90 degree bend up like tenfold. It will no longer flex from there. It works really well. The way I did it was actually re really clever. I'll give him that. So, what I did was I got some just angle iron and I just notched it out. So, I just notched it out with the angle grinder like that. And then I made it another side because obviously you need to clamp the material. This is this is horrible. It's not, it's, it's not pretty. <laughs> this was just so we could literally get the chisel in there. So for demonstration purposes only, we use this really dangerous bit of offcut. <laughs> we actually tried to use a chisel, but a hard chisel. It was a little bit too sharp and ended up kind of like piercing the steel and not actually doing a little dint. 
So we ended up just using a piece of steel. <laughs> <laughs> it's really technical tooling. This is just to demonstration purposes. But it's done a little like kick in the middle there. It's hard to see on this piece of steel. But it's done a little kick in the middle. It's better on the other one, but it makes it a lot stronger. And that way you don't have to gusset the shit out of it. Yeah, because <laughs> no we, we gusset the crap out of everything. <laughs> but you can see now it doesn't bend on the, it doesn't really bend on the bend anymore. Yeah, it doesn't flex on the bend anymore. That's the whole point of it. We just really wanted to test it out. Um, and it, it actually worked really well. I think we just need to get a better set of chisels to knock it in a bit easier. Because obviously, because obviously, because <laughs> obviously a piece of steel isn't going to work. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, shall we bolt that carbion now? Yeah, let's bolt the carbion and we'll bolt this down. The other benefit of this whole setup as well too is because the heater line doesn't go into the manifold anymore, we can just go directly to the heater. And it just looks a whole lot neater. It just it neatens up everything. The heater it? looks neater. I can just feel the response. <laughs> Alright, well I guess the only thing that we... You're basically in real time now as to where we got to with the car, but the only thing that we need to test now is... Is the air filter actually going to fit in the car? We didn't think of checking that. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've never actually checked to see if it's going to clear the bonnet. Because it does look kind of high. Yeah, so... <laughs> oh, it does look high. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see a lot of cars, don't you? Yep, I thought it might get hit a little bit more hidden. Maybe not. Have you got the wing nut? How to destroy a $2,000 carby. <laughs> 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 I know. Oh, are we going to bolt it? Are you that confident? I feel like if it squishes it a little, it might help. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a fair point. Put some grease on the end of the car, on the end of the air filter to make sure it doesn't tip the bonnet. What's the highest point? Obviously, this point, eh? I like the front. What do you want? Ten mil clearance? <laughs> that's probably eight yeah, mil. Yeah, that's what you want. The engine's not going to go higher. It's going to go side to side. This is the scary bit because if this doesn't fit, I mean, worse that case. means we're putting a K and N on it. Yeah. Nathan really, Nathan really wants to go a K and N filter. I'm all for the aftermarket filter. I want to keep it stock. So what we're going to do is we're going to compromise and we're going to keep it stuck. <laughs> no, no. Um, we'll probably end up changing it to like a K&N filter and maybe see if we can get like one that has a hard top on it so we can put the stickers back on it because I think it looks cool like that but... Yeah, listen, listen closely. Even the noise is like... Dun, dun. Oh, it's not... No, it's like when the door shuts behind you. Doesn't sound like it's hitting. Should we just go for it? Yeah. <laughs> Hang on, it didn't go all the way, but that might be... Is it hitting it? Hasn't touched. Oh, you got, oh, you got plenty. You reckon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's no dint through the bonnet, so that's a good start. No grease! What a beautiful. Good support one. Oh well, that's a success then. Success, 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 success test. That looks freaking good, doesn't it, with the filter on? It does. I was just saying to Michael how fresh the engines look with the new intake and the big, the big carby under the factory in, um, air cleaner and the brand new extractors we've put on it and the brand new Dizzy with the new leads and the bloody socks on the leads as well. It just looks so refreshed. The only old bit really is the bottom end. I guess, oh. yeah, now we can plug it all in, eh? That'd ruin it. Plugging this back in. <laughs> that looks good though. It sits high. It's scary high. But, anyways, so, <clears throat> that is that sorted. Now we need to move on to the fuel system. So, what we've had to do is we've had to remove the original mechanical pump that works off the cam lobe on the engine and we just have to blank it off really so we just created a blanking plate with some um, flat bar it was about five mil thick um loaded it with goop and capped that off so then oil doesn't come pouring out so that was pretty simple um except it was kind of tricky to get the actual the except old... michael struggled to get it out let's um cut to him trying to get that out yeah it didn't fit all that well. It was just tricky because it was so long. The actual yeah, the um, arm is so long, isn't it? The arm was so long that it, I had to actually drop the uh, power steering belt off to be able to get the damn thing out. Yeah. But other than that, it was easy. And then Nate just made up a plate. We just 
use a gasket because we got fancy and actually used uh, yeah, we, um, gasket yeah. paper and mm. made up a gasket and slapped her on and that was the end of that. Yeah, so hopefully it doesn't leak. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. But other than that, now we can move on to under the car and looking at our issues of fuel tank and yeah. EFI because obviously now we need a fuel pump. So I mean, we did a little bit of fuel stuff this morning before we realized that the microphone wasn't working. So again, apologies. We're gonna run you through what our thought process is. Fuel system in this is pretty easy, it's pretty basic. Um, basically, you've got fuel coming in here through a dash, uh, dash six line, and you've got fuel coming out here past the regulator. Like we said earlier, it's self-regulating, so you don't have to worry about running a separate one. And then they both just run to the tank, basically. So it's pretty simple. Our plan was that we were going to run a VS Commodore fuel tank. The reason why we're going to run that is because it has an in-tank pump already built into it, it's already got a swirl pot into it, and we heard that maybe you might be able to just bolt one straight in, and they were supposed to fit pretty well into the HQ. And all we'd have to do was basically move the fill and neck to the back, and we just weld that up, and we thought it was going to be sweet, sweet and easy. So this morning what we did is we pulled the old fuel tank out. It wasn't too much of a struggle, I suppose. We got a fuel everywhere, though, that, as to be expected. We pulled that out and we bolted in the new one to see how that looked. We didn't even bolt it in, we sat it in. Oh, we sat it in, yeah. And then we were like, hmm, that's ugly. Okay, yeah. that's shit. Hmm, okay, that doesn't work. What do we do? Damn it. <laughs> you can see it's a lot narrower than the original one. The original one comes out to here. And the trouble is, if it was a wagon, it probably wouldn't be so bad because I don't think you see it as much in a wagon, but in a sedan where it rises up like this, you see in the back of a HQ, all you see is fuel tank. So, it would kind of look... I'm not so thrilled on the idea of it looking out of place. The filler neck here that we'd need to modify, it's really... It could be done, but we, it might end up getting really close to this seam here, which means that we might end up damaging that seam and then we get a fuel leak and out of our skill set when it comes to fabricating. So, unfortunately, we're going to ditch the idea. But what that means is we will now be looking at modifying the original tank. I wasn't really planning on doing so because HQ tanks are notoriously shallow and they're hard to get like a swirl pot and a fuel pump into. There's guys that have done it. They've, I've seen guys basically put a 50 mil spacer in here and modify the tank and put in a nice EFI hanger and everything like that, put swirl pots in. Guys that have a lot of fabricating skills, not guys like us. But we just quickly jumped on the computer before and we had a look. There is a company that's nearly fairly local to us that actually uh, sells a kit for HQs. So it's a built-in swirl pot kit. Supposedly that's supposed to fit a HQ tank. So we can't call them today because they're closed. So I'll give them a call tomorrow and uh, have a chat to see what they reckon. And if that works, we'll probably go ahead and do that. It does hold us up from finishing up the fuel system today, which is a bit of a pain, but it is what it is. So what we're going to do now is put this aside and we're going to get started on looking at putting the bung into the exhaust into the extractors for the O2 sensor on the poly. So let's get this out of the way and we'll have a look at that. The instructions ask for 10 degrees above center line. Basically, it needs to just kind of be above a line because I know that these don't like to be, like have moisture in that on them. So it likes to be higher and not low where possibly water or something could sit. So we'll mark this on the extractor Rip the extractor off, weld the bung on, and then we can put this back in. Look at us go reading instructions. I know, yeah. If only we had to read the instructions properly on the Edderbrock manifold. Yeah. Decided to go upwards in towards the gearbox. That way we can run our wiring up along the back of the gearbox and up to the back of the car. So right there is where we're gonna drill a hole and weld this on. So now we're gonna drop the extractor, which thank God this is the easy side, and weld this in. Yep. Around it. So now we can around it. 
Oh, nice work, man. Almost like your dad's a welder. <laughs> I reckon that's what they use in the factory. <laughs> that's not bad. That's good, man. Well done. Thanks. Good welding. Thanks, man. Is that bang enough for you? Yeah. We're watching your uh, silicon laying skills now. They're not as good as yours. Mine are always judged. They're not as good as yours. They're better. <laughs> oh. No! <laughs> I had the perfect finish there. That's hot going for you. Great. Nice. Perfect. Bolt me. That was he sees you were doing it. I know. Thank God we did the shit side first. I know. Alrighty. Well, that's it. We've, um, well, it's not it, but that's it for today. We're going to call it here. The headers are now in, the extractors are back in, and they're grouped up. And we did that side as well, too. That was really, really easy. <laughs> anyway, it's done now. Yeah, it's looking really good. Now, our biggest issue now is trying to figure out what we're going to do with the fuel tank. We're not exactly sure what we're going to do yet. But, guys, if you're still watching, thanks for hanging around. For this episode, uh, we know it's not our usual style episode, but it was just the stuff up that we made with the microphone, obviously. And unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it. Once all the parts are on it, that's it. And we're usually one take wonders. So to go back and uh, do it all again just isn't anything we could do about it. It's just. So I hope this episode's turned out okay. I've got no idea. I haven't started editing yet, so I've got no idea what it looks like at this stage. If it's been crap and you've hung in for this long, credit to you. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Anyway, if you liked what you've seen here and you want to see more, make sure that you like, subscribe. It really helps us out heaps, guys. We really appreciate it. If you'd like to support the channel even more, head on over to the website where you can buy a bunch of pack shop merch, like stickers and stuff. All proceeds from the stickers go straight back into buying stuff like this. So the more stickers you buy, the more cool stuff, cool stuff we get to build. And you guys get to see, so just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and as always, guys, make sure that you click the link in the description to head over to Burst and Garage and sign up to get all the benefits that comes with that. It's well worth it, guys, and I really do hope you guys jump over and uh, sign up. It'll be awesome. Until then, when we get stuck into the first the fuel system, hopefully with the fuel tank that we know what we're doing, and then the wiring, and then it's really not that far from actually starting up, to be honest. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching again. Sorry about the microphone issue. Hopefully we turned out okay after this. Sometimes things just don't go to plan, especially when we're doing it and we're learning along the way, especially all this video. You don't, you think we don't know much about what we're doing when it comes to building stuff? You should see us when we're trying to work a camera. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. Why is there no sound? Anyway guys, until the next episode, with sound we promise, we'll see you then. Actually we probably shouldn't make that promise because we promise caught up. We had that, we've had the sniper now sitting in the box for like since November and slowly gathering parts. Hello, cocky. <laughs> and slowly we've been gathering parts piece by piece. Really? Can you help me or? <laughs> I'm filming. I'm keeping an eye on the light to make sure that the mic is still on. <laughs> we're definitely not having that mistake again, people. Yeah. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't believe it yesterday. When our microphone died, it was the most beautiful, quietest day and sunny, beautiful day. And today, when we have a microphone working, it's cold and raining. It's cold and raining, and <laughs> all you can hear is rain in the background. It's like you know, in the middle evil days. Pretty flashy did you do? No, it's the middle evil days. You know when they like people attacking. <laughs> 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 that sounded really good. <laughs> <Did it? laughs> <laughs> did I present him a black on my face? Oh, yeah, you sure did. <laughs> did you I? sure did. <laughs> He's got it all on his chest. Do I? <laughs> Great. By the way, the amount of people that commented on balloons in the last episode as well, too, because they watched all the way through the episodes that I don't know what they're talking about. You guys are all legends. That was freaking awesome. That made us laugh so hard. We were both kind of like, on Thursday, we were like, why is there balloons being commented? Yeah, totally I think Michael better. knew. I was just kind of like, what the hell's all those balloons? <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty funny though. It made me laugh. Maybe we need a new word of the day. What should be the word of the day this time around? Um, microphone. <laughs> microphone. <laughs>